Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Love Love Tuts, and today we're going to continue this blog that we've been doing, and we're going to be adding to it the time element. And the time element is a new element in HTML5, and really what it does is it tells your browser that the content inside of an element denotes a time. And this can be used in all sorts of ways. So we could say um, in our blog post time metadata here that we have, we could go ahead and use a time format with the time element. So let's go to our code. And right here on this first node where it says time metadata, inside of here, I'm just going to have a time element. And now I can put a date. So I'm going to put today's date, which is the year 2013. And the today is the, I believe the 22nd of uh, June. So 06 and then 22nd. All right, so this is our date. So let's save this. Let's come back here and we now have this date that looks like what you'd expect because it's exactly what we just typed. Let me bump up the size here so you can see it a little bit better and it's just today's date. So at its most simple you can use this time element and it's going to pick up this content and pick up that it's June 22nd 2013. That's because that it's looking for uh, a specific format inside of here. It's looking for year, 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 hyphen, month, month, hyphen, day, day. So what happens if you're, you want to express time for this blog post in a different way? So we're going to have here, I'm just going to say posted on with a colon. And then inside of here, I'm just going to have it say June 22nd. 2013 and now we want this to be able to pick up this correct time format for us. So there's actually an attribute of the time element that we can use called date time. And we can set date time to the actual date format that we were using before. So it'll be 2013 06-22. So this is going to let the time element know that the actual date time is, is this date, um, the year 2013, June 22nd. Regardless of how this is typed, this could be complete nonsense in here. Uh, you could have just have numbers in here, and this would see this as this date. So you might not want to do that for your user's sake, uh, but just an example. Now if we refresh this, we see posted on June 22nd, 2013. So you notice this date time doesn't affect the actual output. It's just um, an attribute that the browser can see and know that this is the correct date. So what's some other ways we can use this? Well, we could have this, instead of being a date here, we could have this be something like uh, 7 p.m. And we want this date time to actually have the time. So we could use this as 1900. So now this is going to see this is 7 p.m. In the fact, this is actually looking at UTC. So it's in a 24, uh, a 24 hour clock. So you could actually specify the time zone here as well. And if we wanted to say we were in the Eastern time zone, we could say minus 0500. So this is back five hours. And so this is going to be 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's pretty cool. And uh, what else can we do here? Well, we can add this to a specific date. So we could say 7 p.m. on a specific date. And so we had that date before, so it was 2013 hyphen 06-22. And then now we're gonna have a T here. Notice how you could also have just a space. I sort of like the T because it, it, signif you know, it lets you know the time. Um, but let's say June uh, 22nd, 2013. 7 p.m. and now it's going to read this regardless of what you have in here as this exact time. So let's save this. Let's check out our page. Let's refresh. Cool. So why might this be useful? Well, it really just helps the browser and search engines and all sorts of things know uh, that this is not only a time, but here this is the specific time. And it might be really useful if for these blog posts, uh, this says posted on. 
Uh, but this time element doesn't necessarily know that this is the publish date. So what we can do is we can actually add a Boolean attribute in here. And notice how you don't have to have a value for it. All you have to say is pub date. So if we say pub date, just like that, save it. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to tell the search engines that this blog post was published on this date at this time right here. That way, maybe in a couple years down the line or something, it might not see this as being relevant uh, just because it's old or uh, that could, you know, could totally affect how uh, people are searching for this. It's giving it the exact published date. That way, search engines don't have to guess anymore. Now, keep in mind, we can also have this saying even less. So we don't just have to have um, a date time. It doesn't have to be this specific. It doesn't have to be an exact date. And we can just say 2013, and it's grabbing the whole year. Likewise, we can say 2013-06, and it's grabbing uh, the month June in 2013. We could also say it's grabbing the month of June and the 22nd as the date, and this is going to be saying it's the 22nd of June on any year. Now we can even specify a week. So let's say if we have 2013, we want to say it's the second week in 2013, we can say W2. This means the second week in 2013. So it'd be January 8th, uh, the week of January 8th. So great. So this is the time element. It's pretty cool. Use it on your blog post. Use it where you have time that might be relevant and just add more semantic meaning to your code. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Touch. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video. We love to hear from you. And thanks for watching.